Welcome to the Iputronic Online Academy. This video series will cover various topics in easy to follow along videos. Additional assistance can be provided through the worldwide Iputronic locations. Iputronic is currently made up of five different business units. This video will focus on the measure and motion products. In today's video, we are going to focus on a deep dive into the acquisition tab in IPMotion PC. These features can also be found when you're configuring a data logger in IPMotion RT. Topics will include calculations through formulas, variables, status, monitoring, and live analysis. To demonstrate these features, we will be using a generated sine wave signal from our demo plugin. Like all of our other plugins, this can be downloaded on the iptronic.com website. We are going to create a status variable first, as we will need this for some of the other configuration. A status variable is a value that can either be 0 or 1. In this case, we are defining the start value to be 0. We can later assign the status variable to a virtual button and use it to start or stop a recording. We are also going to assign a number variable that can be changed to any number in the range. In this example, it is minus 100 to plus 100 with a start value of 0. We are now going to create a formula based on the number variable that we just assigned. We are going to create a live math channel that adds whatever the number variable is assigned to to the current value of the sine wave that's being generated. Select the channel that you would like to base the calculation on on the left side, choose your mathematical operator, and then add either a number or a second channel for the calculation. There is a wide variety of different operations that you can choose from. If the operations are more complex or require multiple steps, there are typically instructions available towards the bottom of the window. In the monitoring section, you will find limit values and ranges. Limit values monitor the value of channels until they cross a certain threshold, or until a certain event occurs. This could be a sensor value, a GPS location, a CAN message, or anything else that is available in your setup. For this example, we are going to create a pop-up window when our calculated channel exceeds the value of 15. The value will also change color when viewed in our view tab. Note that there are multiple possible actions that can be configured based on the limit value. Pop-up windows can be completely customized, scripts can be run, or an I.O. can be used to control an external system. Ranges can be used to monitor different sections of the same signal. A typical example would be for a thermal channel. Green is good, orange is caution, and red is too hot. We will define the upper and lower limits for each of these sections for our sine wave in the configuration screen. Just like in the individual limit value, different actions can be configured. For this example, we're just going to leave it at changing color. The color changes will apply to all the supported visual elements in the view screen. They will also show up as straight lines in a YT chart. We can also assign live classifications to the channels. There are multiple options, but we will use sample count and time at level for this example. This could be used to find out what level of RPM the vehicle is throughout the test and how much time it spends there. We will now assign our sine wave to the classification. The last step in our acquisition tab is going to be creating a storage group that is triggered by our status variable that we set earlier. In order to do that, we will select trigger data storage and create a formula that activates the storage group when the status bit is set to one. We can then assign that status to a virtual button and start our recording by pressing that button. When everything is assigned, this is what it looks like. We have our YT chart with the limit values and ranges clearly visible as horizontal lines. The tachograph element clearly shows the ranges with the colors that we set previously. The range colors are also reflected in the alphanumeric display element at the top right. We can use the virtual trigger button to flip our status bit from 0 to 1, which will also result in the recording to start. The status of the recording is displayed on the bottom right in the LED. The two classification elements are continuously 
continuously updating to show how long a value was at a certain range. We will now modify our number variable by clicking the up and down arrows. The calculated channel now updates in real time and deviates from the original sine wave. Once that channel crosses our threshold that we've set, we will see the pop-up window appear. This configuration looks great now that it's done, but how did we get here? I'm going to retrace all of the steps that it takes to create a dashboard like this. I will start by creating a new blank page and rearranging the grid in the way that I want to see my data. Right-click on any area of your screen, select Change Visual Element, and select the element you wish to use from the drop-down menu. To create additional grid slots, right-click and select Divide Vertically or Divide Horizontally. Right-click on each of the new areas and select the visual element you want to see there. You can also grab the bars that separate the individual elements and drag them until the sizing feels appropriate. Once the visual element is selected for an area, you can drop as many channels there as you want. You can see that once the channels are dropped, the ranges and limit values will automatically be visible. Now it's time to do some touch-ups so everything is easier to view. We'll start with the YT chart. To access the visualization options, right-click on any of the elements and select Properties. We're going to define a fixed range and joint axes for the YT chart. We will also change the color and the thickness of the lines of the channels that are being displayed. To help our visual indication with the LEDs in the trigger, we are going to set those to be green when they're active and red when they're inactive. Again, this is accessed by right-clicking and selecting properties. We then define a color for each state. If we click display now, the demo plugin will generate the sine wave as we saw on the previous screen. At this point, I realized that I had forgotten to assign the classifications to their respective display elements. Luckily, the view screen can be reconfigured even while the measurement is running. So I rearranged the grid and made space for the classification charts at the bottom of the screen. If at any time you realize that you've forgotten something or that you want to change your layout or add a page, feel free to do so even if the measurement is currently active. There was no good way to show how live FFT calculation works using the demo plugin, so we came up with a different setup to demonstrate the capability. We have a tuning fork that is equipped with a strain gauge, a TED sensor going into our MXSTG strain gauge module, and then connected to the PC. To add FFT calculation, right-click, add FFT, and then select the channel that you're calculating the FFTs for. It will result in three separate channels, amplitude, power, and phase. We've created different visual elements to show each one of these channels. The bottom right ties in a video stream of the tuning fork being hit against the table, resulting in a change in the visual elements. We hope that this tutorial has been helpful. If you have any further questions, please reach out to our info at IPtronic email address or your local IPtronic branch office.